it's just very fulfilling to use science as a way to protect marine animals and ecosystems. And working with the Park Service, you get to go to these sites and see what you're working to protect. scientist at the Alaska Sea Life Center. The goal of this project is to use bivalves, so razor clams, uh, mussels, and a couple other clam species, to look at how the coastal ecosystem in Lake Clark and Katmai are changing. This is important for humans and, and wildlife, so the bears depend on these bivalves as a food resource. And so if something happens to the bivalves, that could impact the bear population. Bivalves are very useful because they live in that environment and they don't really move from the area that they're in. They're filter feeders, so they filter out small particles in the water. That's why they're so useful, is their ability to filter feed. Uh, allows them to basically concentrate what's in the water around them. But that also includes things like pollutants and bacteria and stuff like that. For the lab work that the Alaska Sea Life Center is doing, we have several experiments uh, that look at different aspects of the mussel's health. So the first thing we do when we get them back in the lab is we measure their width, their length, and their height, and their weight. These are what we call morphometric measurements. We can do several calculations based on these measurements. One of the measurements we take is called condition factor, and this is basically how much tissue the bivalve has versus how big it is. And essentially gives, gives us an idea of their nutritional status. Have they been getting enough food to grow? If they're not making enough tissue and they're not growing well, then that can indicate that there's a problem at the, at the site. So after we take those, uh, the morphometrics, then we dissect them. One of the experiments we're doing is called the P450 assay. We're concerned about oil exposure, so hydrocarbons from either vessels in the area or worst case scenario would be an, an oil spill. And so P450 is an enzyme that processes hydrocarbons. Um, and it, it can also process other uh, man-made chemicals. We can look at the enzyme activity and see if they've been exposed to hydrocarbons. Every organism has DNA. It's the blueprint for the whole organism and how the organism functions on a daily basis. From the DNA, a template is made into messenger RNA. This is what we're measuring. The messenger RNA dictates which proteins will be made for which function. My name is Liz Bowen, and I'm an ecologist with USGS. We're using a tool called gene transcription. Let's say we collect a razor clam, take it back to the boat, we open it up, and I take a tiny piece of gill tissue and a tiny piece of the mantle and then we stick it in a special buffer that stabilizes it so nothing else changes, bring it back to the lab at UC Davis, and we do the little gene transcript magic on it and see how many transcripts for which gene are being produced. The technique itself has been in existence for 15 to 20 years and used primarily in human medicine. So when you go to the doctor, they'll run these tests on you, they look in your blood and see what your transcripts are. It's being used a lot for gene therapies for cancer. So we've adapted it, modified it to use on the razor clam and the muscle. It can tell us whether the organism is sick. It can tell us whether there's not enough food. Are there pathogens, bacteria, and viruses? Is there a toxin in the environment? It's an incredible opportunity for all the scientists involved and the science community and the public to gain a lot of information about an amazing place and ecosystems that we rely on. So many animals are connected with this that it, it's, it's a great opportunity for all of us to learn more.
Our ability to preserve these national parks is important for everyone who wants to, to come and enjoy them in the future. We're seeing huge changes with global warming. How is that going to affect all of this out here? And certainly, you know, I, we can't stop the global warming, but we can help mitigate what's going on. Things are starting to change now. Let's do something about it.